Hello, listener. My name is Dr. Thais Speaks. I'm your life strategist and the common sensei. This is the Common Sensei Show. Before you do anything else, stop and take a moment now to subscribe to this podcast, The Common Sensei Show. So the very next time I post a show, you can be notified. I can be found on iTunes as well as Google Play Music under The Common Sensei Show. I would also love a great review. So if you can, please leave me a review on iTunes. I want to share with you all who are raising children in any capacity that you must constantly change the way you communicate with your children on a year to year or a phase to phase basis. For instance, if your child is five years old and you found an effective way to communicate with them at five, you have to be open to changing or improving that particular type of communication when they turn, let's say, eight or nine years old because they are more mature now. So what worked for them at five may not necessarily work for them at eight. As a mother of two teenagers, who are both very busy teenagers. Well, one child has a job as a DJ and the other has a job to maintain great grades in his honors courses. It's challenging for me as their parent to constantly remind them of their household duties, follow up to make sure that they've done them and also keep up with the rewards and consequences of everything. The last thing you want to do as a parent, and please listen to me when I say this, the last thing you want to do is to tell your child that you have a reward or consequence for something that they did or did not do and you don't deliver. I want to make this very clear to you because parents, I'm on your side. Your child is constantly trying to learn your style of parenting. And if you are inconsistent, they will know. If you don't follow through on your word, they will know. If you are timid about dealing out the consequences, they can (laughs) smell the fear all over you. So here's my advice. Now I'm sharing this with you because this is what's currently working for my household. And I want you to at least know from parent to parent what works and possibly what doesn't. Because at the end of the day, we are all in this together. I went to Lowe's or Home Depot. It doesn't matter which one. Just go to a home improvement store. And I bought a huge whiteboard. But just to give you an idea, let's keep it at eight feet high by three and a half feet wide. I have the whiteboard against the main hallway wall. I choose to put it up in the hallway by the front door so that members of the house, meaning everybody who lives here, can't help but to pass by it a few times a day. So you have the whiteboard and of course you'll need dry erase markers. Okay, here it is. First, you must have a list of what your child's household duties are. This could say, do your homework, clean your room, wash dishes, clean the bathroom, whatever work you need them to contribute to in the home. Okay, so you have the list. Now, I do need to tell you that this list is written out or typed up somewhere, already laid out. For me, I typed out the list of duties in a table format. The days of the week are the columns and the household duties are the rows. So for the first column starts Monday, Tuesday, so on and so forth into the weekend. The first row lists clean room. Their names are under each day for clean room because every day I'm requiring them to clean the room. The second row lists clean bathroom. My daughter's name would be under the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday columns. And my son's name would be under the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday columns. The third row would list wash the dishes. My daughter washes dishes every day. So her name is written under each day across the row, Monday through Sunday. The fourth row lists vacuum the carpet throughout the house. Now my son is responsible for that on Tuesdays, Thursdays, 
and Saturdays. The household duty list goes on for about, mm, I'd say 12 rows. It's mostly chores that if all combined should take no longer than 30 minutes a day. And that's only if they are slacking and taking their sweet time. So you get the gist of how the chore list is set up. Now, remember, this is a separate sheet of paper. And in a moment, we're going to utilize the whiteboard for our rewards and consequences of the chores. I know sometimes it's not enough to just hear my voice on this audio podcast. So I want you to experience me in front of the camera as well. (laughs) It's kind of scary to actually do that. Just come on over to my YouTube page at youtube.com slash user slash Dr. Thais Speaks. Take a moment and go to my page and hit the subscribe button. People like me appreciate that. That's your way of showing love for us, right? Again, it's youtube.com slash user slash Dr. Thais Speaks. And that's D-R-T-H-A-I-S. S-P-E-A-K-S. And you could also find me on Facebook under Dr. Taye Speaks. Click the like button there and let's be social media friends. Like I said, that social media friends. <laughs> okay, so now your children know exactly what their duties are because you've made it very plain, right, on your document. Keep in mind, the whiteboard is only for you to keep track of their rewards and consequences. We also need to take a little time to section out this particular whiteboard. At the top, you write your child's name pretty big and underline it. On the left side, underneath their name, in a smaller section, write the words rewards. This is where you would write any reward that you have told them they're going to get. It's also a reminder for yourself mostly, but everyone needs to see it so that everyone is on the same page. And on the right side, write the word consequences. Naturally, if or when your child has not done what's on their chore list, then you keep track of it in the consequences section. Now keep in mind, this is a small section. For me, the rewards and consequences section is small enough for a number because that's where the number of hours are going to go. Let me explain what the hours are. Okay, so as a parent, it's important to know what your child likes to do because you need some leverage when it comes to rewards and consequences, right? For our house, my son loves to play video games. So if he does well with his chore list, he gets the highest amount of video game time offered, which by the way, is only on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Um, The Saturdays and Sundays are after 12 noon and they go up until midnight. As for my daughter, she loves being on the phone and hanging out with friends. So when they have consequences written on the board, it's time taking away from being on video games and on the phone and hanging out with friends. Um, Underneath the rewards and consequences section, you would list out the things your child did well or did not do well at all. So if on the chore list, let's say for Monday, your child was supposed to wash dishes, but they didn't wash dishes. By Tuesday morning, when you got up, the first thing you do when you wake up is write on the board under consequences, did not wash dishes. (laughs) Then you write Monday next to it. Then on Wednesday morning, you see that your child did not vacuum. So you would wake up and see that your child clearly did not vacuum the night before. And you would put did not vacuum with Tuesday written on it. So you're writing out what they did not do on the chore list. And you also have to write the day that they did not do it because you're doing a thorough job with keeping up with what they did didn't do. You don't want them to come back and say, well, on Monday I did wash dishes or on Tuesday I did vacuum. No, you didn't because I wrote it down here. Um, and it's not anything that you're sneaking to do. It's, it's on the whiteboard. So when they wake up and they see that you have written this out, they're like, oh yeah, I didn't do that. Okay. So I want to stay on track. 
Basically, for every chore your child does not do, it's written on the board along with the day that they did not do it. Then at the end of the week on Saturday morning, you count up how many chores and days they have on the board. So if there are two different chores written on one day, then that's two hours of consequences. If for the week they have four different chores that they did not do all week, Monday through Friday or Sunday through Thursday, depending on when you start your child's weekend play, then that's 20 hours of consequences. So that's 20 hours of not playing video games or not being on the phone or not hanging out with friends. So as a real world example in my house, um, I tally up the consequences on Friday afternoon when my son gets home, because the first thing he wants to do is get on video games. Well, I say, okay, well, for the week, we've tallied four hours of consequences. So that's four hours of you not being on video games. And when I say not being on video games, that also includes not being on his phone because his phone (laughs) is full of video games he has downloaded. So we have to make sure that, you know, we're very clear as parents, you shall not be on any electronics until your four hours are served. Those four hours that he serves off of electronics can be anything productive, anything that's going to um, provide progress for him. For instance, he can read a book. He can go outside and practice basketball. He can go outside and ride his bike. It's all, you know, like uh, progress in his health. It's not like I'm trying to punish him. It's I want him to explore other avenues of living other than video games. Same for my daughter. I want her to explore other avenues of living other than always being on the phone or always just, you know, hanging out with her friends. Find something constructive to do in the home, outside of the home, like, you know, like in the yard or something, just something that you almost in this day and age, which is 2017, you have to make your kids get off of those electronics. Okay, so staying back on track, when you first start your rewards and consequences program, so (laughs) see how structured this sounds now that I've added the word program at the end. So when you first start your rewards and consequences program, it may seem a little harsh for your child or depending on what kind of parent you are, maybe even for you. Or they may think that you're being mean. But no, what you're really doing is finally keeping up with what you told them that their responsibilities are and keeping record of whether they have done them or not. Now, yeah, they're going to get pissed because you are keeping a record of what they did not do on a board that everybody can see. So, yeah, they're going to get a little pissed. They're not going to like it. But guess what? It's going to get better because they don't want to see what they did not do on the board. They don't want the consequences of the hours taken away from them. So yeah, it's going to take a couple of weeks. It may take a couple of months. For some households, it may take six to eight months. Who knows? But as a parent, you're being responsible responsible enough to stick to your word. And that's what's really important here. You're sticking to your word. I cannot express how important it is for parents to stick to their word. And by writing this out on the whiteboard, it is helping us out. Now we've covered the consequences when they don't do what they're supposed to do. Let's be sure to reward them for when they actually do everything they're supposed to do. Let's say on Monday, they've done absolutely everything. This is where you would determine what their reward is. Is it an hour or two of consequences taken off at the end of the week? Is it some sort of financial payment, which I would like to discuss in a part two of rewards and consequences? So the rewards would depend on what you're willing to give. But keep in mind, it will have to be something that you can take away too in the consequences section. So if your consequences are hours taking away from something that they enjoy doing, (laughs) 
then your rewards needs to be hours given or that you can delete from um, the consequences. So it's, it's like hour for hour. If your rewards is financial, let's say um, for every day that they do their chores, you're rewarding them an extra dollar or an extra two dollars on top of their um, allowance, then the consequences need to subtract a dollar or subtract two dollars or subtract just something financially. So 50 cents, 25 cents, something like that. So keep in mind that it has to be balanced. Well, I hope that this is something that you can consider applying in your household with your children and something that once you get used to implementing will work out in your home. Letting your children know that you are about keeping your word and you are willing to deal out rewards and consequences. Thank you so much for listening. This show is my contribution to life. If you know someone who would like to learn about breakthrough strategies on how to live a better life, apply business sense to everyday living and increase their common sense to make it common again, or you just want to share some insight into becoming a better parent when dealing out those rewards and consequences. Use seven seconds right now to help spread the word on your social media sites. Find the share button, email it, just help spread this message and tell your friends. This show is titled Rewards and Consequences for Children's Chores Part 1. You know what else? I would really appreciate, really appreciate a positive review from you on iTunes or whatever platform you're listening to The Common Sensei Show on. True Life Experience by Thais Wilson and Music Bed Magic by Keith Griffin of Ashy Breeze Music. Enjoy your journey in life. Live, love, and laugh. I'm Dr. Thais Speaks, and you can find me online at drthais.com. That's D-R-T-H-A-I-S.com. Thank you for listening and caring enough to share.